Hello. In this video, we're going to be talking about something called the board account method. In the board account method, we assign points to the positions on the ballot, and it ranks candidates according to the number of points that they get. This is really best seen looking at an example, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into an example. Again, we're going to be taking a look at the Math Appreciation Society, the MAS. Um, so that's the student club dedicated to an unsung but worthy cause, that of fostering the enjoyment and appreciation of mathematics among college students. The MAS chapter at Tasmania State University is holding its annual election, and there are four candidates running Alicia, Boris, Carmen, and David, A, B, C, and D for short. We have our preference schedule below. We want to determine the winner using the board account method. The preference schedule has been reproduced here. We have our preference schedule. We have our first, second, third, and fourth choices. What we want to do is assign points to each of these. You're going to start with the fourth choice with one point. The third choice will be two points. The second choice would be three points. And first choice would be four points. So you always do that no matter how many choices there are you start at the bottom that will get one point and then second from the bottom will get two points on up until you get to the top. So if you had five choices there would be five points would be the first place. If you had ten choices the first place would be worth ten last place would be worth one. So the easiest way to do this and to neatly keep track of um, the points for each candidate, so I'm going to write down A equals and then write down the points with a parenthesis. So 4 and we're going to so multiply the points times its number of volts. So 4 with an empty set of parentheses plus 3 plus 2 and then just leave a plus because multiplying by one doesn't change your number. So that will be the board account for candidate A. So now in this first set of parentheses, we're going to write down the number of first place votes that candidate A received. And candidate A received a total of 14 first place votes. Next, in the second parentheses, we want to write down how many second place votes candidate A got, and candidate A didn't have any second place votes. So zero. And then the third place votes for candidate A, again, zero. And then the last place votes for candidate A. And they had 18. 1923. And then take 4 times 14 plus 23. And that should give you a total of 79. So now we're going to move on to candidate B and do the same thing. So write this all out. And so candidate B had four first place votes. And second place votes, 24. And third place votes, 9. And no last place votes. So now you want to take 4 times 4 plus 3 times 24 plus 2 times 9 and add those up and that should give you a total of 106. And then finish this up with candidates C and D.
candidate C had 11 first place votes. And eight second place votes. And eighteen third place votes. And zero last place votes. So again, we want to take four times eleven plus three times eight plus two times eighteen and that should give you a total of 104. Candidate D had eight first place votes, five second place votes, 10 third place votes, and 14 last place votes. So we want to take 4 times 8 plus 3 times 5 plus 2 times 10 plus 14 and this should give you a total of 81. So the winner for the board account of this election is candidate B. Now we want to give a ranking of the candidates. So the first place winner is B. The one with the second most vote, votes was candidate C with 104. And third would be candidate D with 81. And last place would be candidate A with 79. And if you recall when we did the plurality method, and we can just quickly look at that and see, the candidate that has the most first place votes is candidate A. So A wins with plurality. And notice in the ranking where A is using the board account. They came in last place using the board account. And the ranking for the plurality method was A, C, D, B. So one thing that we might want to notice is that when we use the board account, B was first and A was last, but with the plurality, they're flip-flopped. A is in first place and B is in last place. So the first and last place are switched. So both of them had CD um, as the middle two candidates but the first place and the last place got switched. So in this example, we're going to take a look at what's wrong with one of the things that's wrong with the border count method. So how many voters are there in this election? So we have 6 plus 2 plus 3. That's 11 total voters. And so the majority so there are 11 voters. And how many first place votes are needed for a majority? And so if we take 11 divided by 2, we get 5.5. And so we would need 6 votes for a majority. Now we want to determine the plurality winner. And is he or she also a majority winner? So candidate A has 6 first place votes. And so candidate A wins. And yes, um, A is the majority winner. Now we want to de determine the winner using the board account method. So for candidate A, 
I'm going to write down this, my basic calculation that I need to do. There are four candidates, and first place will be four points, second place will be three points, third place will be two points, and last place will be one point. So candidate A has six first place votes. They have no second place votes. They have no third place votes and five last place votes. So we want to take four times six plus five and write down that total. And that should give you 29. Do that for B. B has two first place votes, six second place votes, three third place votes, and no last place votes. So we want to take four times two plus three times six plus two times three, and that should give us a total of 32. Now for candidate C, candidate C has three first place votes, they have two second place votes, and they have six third place votes, and they didn't have any last place votes. So we want to take four times three plus three times two plus two times six and this should give you a total of 30. Now for candidate D. Candidate D doesn't have any first place votes. They have three second place votes. They have two third place votes, and they have six last place votes. So now we want to take four times zero plus three times three plus two times two plus six, and this should give you a total of 19. And so the winner of this election using the board account method is candidate B. So which criterion is violated using the board account in this example? So if we notice when we did the plurality method, candidate A won and candidate A was the majority winner, meaning that candidate A had um, the majority of the first place votes. And the criterion that we saw in one of the previous videos is that if the candidate has the majority of the first place votes, then that candidate should win the election. And so this is the majority criterion. So that is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope you're having a great day.